Melanie Ham. Welcome back to my channel. Today it's Friday, which means that it's How to Friday. I've got a new kind of uh, setup on my channel, How to Fridays, or I'm calling it How to Friday. <laughs> and Tipsy Tuesday, like Tip See Tuesday. So those will be tips, demos, things like that on Tuesdays. So today we are going to be making this flying geese block. But I don't like to make my flying geese the traditional way. I like to use this handy dandy ruler. You can make four blocks at one time, which is super cool. It's a quilt in a day ruler. I love it. So we're going to go over how to do that today. And this tutorial is out of my new flying geese quilting course. I've got a new course out which teaches you how to make the full quilt. Here's the one that I made. This is the one that I made for my best friend's baby girl who just arrived, Finley. There's baby Finley on her new quilt. You can go to my Instagram page and see a better picture. Um, but we make this quilt in the new course start to finish. There are literally 19 lessons two bonus lessons. I teach you all the steps from beginning to end, quilting, binding, basting, all of it. You also get access to my private Facebook group uh, when you purchase the course. All the details will be down below and you can go to geesequilt.com for more information and use the coupon code PURPLE since I used a, an array of beautiful purple fabrics for that quilt, um, use the code PURPLE and get $5 off of the price of the course. I would love to see you in there and help you make that quilt. You, there's the baby size, throw size, and there's also information for the queen size in there as well. Of course, if you have any questions, you can leave those down below in the comments. I'd be happy to answer any questions. But for now, I want to show you guys how to make the flying geese block units using the quilt in a day ruler. So let's get going. All right, so the next thing that we need to do, following along with our instructions, again, I did not come up with this, but I wanna show it to you visually in case the diagrams, they're very well written, but just in case you're new and this kind of is confusing. So we're at step one where it says, place the smaller square right sides together and centered on the larger square, press. So we're right sides together, centered up. You can eyeball it, you do not need to measure this. And then what we need to do is take our large ruler, line it up diagonally, make a mark. So I like using the friction pen, but any sort of water soluble pen will be fine. We'll be cutting along this line so you won't be able to see it. Just make sure that you can see it really well, whatever it is. Then we need to pin. So once everything is pinned, we need to go over to the sewing machine. And see this line? So we're gonna be sewing one quarter of an inch on this side and one quarter of an inch on the other side. So that's why I recommend that you get the quarter inch piecing foot. This is why I don't want you to have the one with the guide. See, this one has a guide and you can imagine that as you're trying to sew along, it's gonna get bunched. That's why you wanna just use the width of the presser foot in order to create your quarter inch seam. So the presser foot that comes with my sewing machine is a scant quarter inch, which is very handy. I didn't need to purchase one. What we're gonna do is sew a straight line, a quarter of an inch away from the line. So remember, don't sew on the line. We're gonna be right next to the line. No need to backstitch.
And then if you have if you have a pair of fabric scissors sitting right next to your sewing machine, it's pretty handy. You can just go ahead and trim this right here. So we are cutting right along that line that we made. Now we need to head to the ironing board to press these. You can go ahead and take the pins out. Okay, here we are at the ironing table and we wanna place our larger piece facing up. And what we're gonna do is we want our seam to lay on the larger side so we can set our seam and then we're gonna flip it up and iron it down. So you see how the seam is laying on the larger piece? That's what we want. Do the same thing with the other side. So now what we're gonna do is place our pieces right sides together with the opposites facing and line up our edges. Okay, so line up the edges. There is gonna be you can see here where this the seams are not going to line up. You're going to have this little kind of tail looking guy. The most important thing is to line up the edges going around the sides. So we're going to line up our edges. If some, some things don't line up perfectly, it's okay. You should be fine. That's the great thing about this project is it doesn't have to be completely accurate. And then what we're going to do is draw another line diagonally going across the seam. So not the same way as the seam. We're going to be drawing a line across the seam. Now we're gonna go do the exact same thing over at the sewing machine. We're gonna sew down a quarter of an inch on either side of our line. All right, now we can cut along that line again. Another tip is you could also do this assembly line fashion and use a ruler and a rotary blade and do it that way as well, depending on if you're ready to make a bunch at one time. Let's take our pins out. The other thing that we need to do is see where this white sort of panel is here in the middle. If we open up, you can see our block and right in here, we need to create a little notch. 
So in between our two seams, just make a little snip. So what that does is it helps the seams to lay on the opposite sides so that we can press and then we have our flying geese block ready to trim. Don't get to the threads. We're just clipping the seam allowance just slightly. Now let's go back to the ironing board. All right, so here is how that works. The seam, it's allowing our seams to go in opposite directions. That way when we press, I like to press from the back side and make sure that when you're pressing, you're not jamming your iron down and sliding it across. We don't want to distort the fabric. You can kind of even gently pick up the, the iron and move it to the next spot. Then we can flip it over and iron the front really quickly. Now this is done with the sewing. The next step is to trim it. Before I do that, I'm gonna press the second one because each block unit that we make creates four flying geese blocks, which is pretty cool. So you're doing basically four at one time, which is why I love this method a lot more than the traditional flying geese method. I'm gonna show you that in a bonus video, how to do that. Um, so that you can, you know, just know how, how it's done traditionally. Um, but it's, it's just, trust me, so, so, so much easier with the ruler that that's why I went ahead and recommended that. All right, now let's trim these up. Here is our block and our special ruler. What we want to do is line the lines up with our triangle shape. And then we can go ahead and cut around this and that's it. This is how I recommend doing the cutting. Go along the right side and then across. Flip it around the right side and across. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So when I go up on this side, I don't want to go all the way. Get a little bit closer. I don't want to go all the way up because we have some other trimming to do here. So line it up. To about here. Hopefully my arm doesn't get in the way too much, but then we want to go across. Hold everything in place. I have some res under the resources page. Under the resources page, I have some options. If you have a hard time with this sliding around, I will share with you some of the little tips and tricks on that. That's a very common problem. So once that's done, you can flip this around We'll line up our ruler again. Now this side and this side have already been trimmed. So we trim up and across again. And that is how we create the flying geese unit or our block. This is one block. So the really cool thing is we got four 
from one set of sewing. So doing this assembly line fashion is a really great idea. I like to get all my blocks done and then do all my cutting at one time. Um, it just makes it go a little bit quicker. All right, everyone, what did you think of that tutorial? It's pretty cool, right, that you can get four blocks from one sort of unit. I love the way that that works out. It's just so cool, so much easier than doing flying geese the traditional way. If you would like to join in on the course to make this quilt with me, I would love to have you in there. Geesequilt.com for more information. Don't forget to use the, the coupon code PURPLE for $5 off. All right, so that was it for How to Friday. I hope you found that helpful. Leave me questions, comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel right here. Give me a thumbs up if you liked this video. And yeah, I guess that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.